So as physios and coaches, we're always looking at ways of how can we improve people through coaching and also through our knowledge as PTs. One way that we see this often is when there's upper body issues surrounding the neck and the upper back, right? So we've talked to host about certain videos like this one, where there's like a monster coming out of your back, it's a big knot, and that it's actually a referral from your neck. What we wanna show you now is how that relates to these particular movements and what we're cueing as coaches to try to be proactively staying away from any sort of neck issues. So what that means is whenever we're pulling, one of these being a rower, if you consistently use it, is that we wanna make sure our neck isn't doing what our upper back muscles should be doing. So as I row and I come through this position, drive my legs through and pull, this is where we kind of wanna finish. But what we find, especially as people get very intense and fatigued, they go to pull and they short the pull and they drag their neck really far forward. You can see my muscles jump out and my neck shaking. That's over exaggerated, but if we see that enough, we start to see people get upper back issues referred from their neck or neck related issues, tension headaches, upper trap stuff, things like that. So before we get someone to that point and help them come down from that, we wanna actively cue them away from that position. Oftentimes it's just simply an awareness. Can you maintain a slight double chin with that? So for this, I'm trying to maintain that as I pull through and not trying to really overemphasize this position, but being aware and keeping my head back, somewhat relaxed, not super tense, but then allows me to actually pull my shoulder blades together as I do so. So from the rower, we're often seeing that compensation that can lead to those types of things. Now, if I get away from the rower and I look at potentially a body weight movement, a great example of this is with a push-up. Now, as we get better at the push-up and get lower and lower to the ground, we feel like we're improving, but oftentimes what we see as physio coaches is the neck getting closer to the ground. So you can see this really visually when I over-exaggerate it. So as I'm down here for the push-up and I go down, what happens is people will stop here, but their neck will reach down. So my body hasn't actually lowered itself anymore, but my neck significantly has because I'm trying to reach for that target, which is the floor, right? So similar to the row, we see that same sort of forward head position. I can feel the muscles underneath the base of my skull, my neck, and I feel my upper traps getting tight. So in fast, as I get fatigued, I start to do this. So my pressing turns into this neck jolting forward motion, and that's where I feel that. Now I also wanna show it from a weightlifting pulling position, right? So now we're gonna switch over to the dumbbell bent over row. So the dumbbell bent over row is something commonly done for lots of individuals at weightlifting. And what it is, is it coming through here, but as we'll see, the neck can compensate the same way. So as I pull back and row, what people do, especially if the weight's too heavy, will go like this. So their head's almost this little Pez dispenser coming forward repeatedly, right? So as I go to row, I can't fully finish that pull. So to get it forward, I use my momentum, my neck to come forward, and I yank that into that position. Now I've just shown the same sort of compensation and fault in three different movements. I already feel a little spiciness in my neck, right? And that's just from demonstrating. Now imagine if your workout is rowing, push-ups, bent over rows of any kind. You can imagine if you had a history of neck stuff, this might be problematic. So if you've been training for a while and you have a history of these things, know your threshold's gonna be a little lower. If you don't, you might be just fine, but it's still a cue we try to give people. And the cue itself isn't just great for trying to be proactive, eliminating those issues. It also provides us that if we can maintain a better neutral neck position, we have more power and full range of motion for our pressing and our pushing. That in itself, from a performance standpoint, is worth the effort to cueing that certain neck position of a slight double chin of just pulling back or maintaining that subtle position. Now, that's all great, we can cue that, but what if somebody isn't watching you, you video yourself, and you know, am I actually getting better? What are other things that I can do as part of a warm up? What are key things that I can involve in this? So we're gonna go ahead and show you, one, three different holds that you can do that can be helpful for not only a threshold awareness piece, but can also be great strengthening points for the neck. And then we're gonna show you a range of motion and joint overall movement that might be helpful as an exercise to involve before or after that as well. So the first three we're gonna use for not only threshold awareness, meaning can my neck actually even tolerate these positions, but two, they can also be progressive strength exercises for the neck. Now it's gonna look goofy, but trust me, these can be very helpful and often insightful at what is the tolerance my neck can handle in these positions. So oftentimes a bench or any table works out really well, 
And what you're going to do is actually hang your head off the table slightly. So I'm gonna kind of face backwards to you. But as I do this, I want my head to be off the back of the table, just slightly. And what I wanna do is try to bring myself to a neutral position. So I'm here, a little double chin, and I hold. We kind of like that as a good threshold the neck can maintain it. Where we generally want people to feel that is kind of deep within their neck here, right? Not massively in the back of their head, but their upper kind of front neck muscles being able to resist that. And we don't want to see their neck go constantly forward or continuously fall back. Now you got to imagine if we're doing that for the front, we definitely want to do it for the back side as well. So you do the same thing in terms of threshold testing of coming here, kind of straddling the bench. And then I let my head drop. I do a little double chin and I hold this position as well. Now here, if I can maintain that sort of double chin position and a relatively neutral neck position, I should be able to hold this rather easily and maintain this spot. Again, at least 30 seconds for that. That should let you know that you're having a difficult time of that threshold awareness. And what we would use the words here is that you have a higher sensitivity to those positions you might be more likely to impress or pulling exercises to feel your neck get goofy. Now those can also be great warm up exercises for you to prep for your actual work that day to kind of feel everything work out appropriately of the muscles of the neck, right? So what I'm also gonna show you is for the upper traps that are involved in the neck. The reason we kind of do these holds is that one, just from a self report from our athletes, when they feel like all their muscles are working, what they would say like, it feels like things are working right or just appropriately, the neck generally feels looser. Right? So when things are activated or worked or held for a certain amount of time, the neck generally feels a little more free. Now, from our perspective, we see that as when things are working kind of the way we think they should supposed to, based on your own individual unique body positions, then we have just better range of motion. There's less protection from the neck and everything surrounding it. So you have the front hold and the back hold for that. And now the second part is to look at the upper traps. So from here, I can do it sitting or standing. But what I like to do is be nice and tall here, hold the weights here, and I often do the opposite of what people will tell you to do. They say, don't shrug your shoulders. In this case, I do want you to shrug your shoulders. I want you to slowly lift your shoulders up to your ears, making sure you only feel your upper traps and that your neck doesn't come forward with this, right? And now you can pray with it. Put your shoulders a little bit forward or a little bit backward and try to feel only your upper traps as you're doing that, not all the way, Right? You don't have to crank on this because as you see that my head kicks back, but just not to be like, Whew, okay, I'm shaking a little bit. I feel my upper traps. You want to hold that for at least 30 seconds as well. And then when you finish that, drop the weights and you just kind of look at like, man, I feel like my head's more on a swivel now. That can be a great way to give your neck more variability for those pushing and pressing movements and going through that sort of position. So. Overall, we took all of this from the very beginning of, man, we've had those videos in the past where like, what is that monster in my upper back or that just not, I can knock out, not, not knock out. You know from us previously, that's usually related to a neck issue. Cool. Well, if we know that's the case, how do we get there and how do we be proactive to cue away from that? Well, we look at your rowing, we look at your pulling, we look at your pressing. Is the neck being involved more than it should be in any of those? As a coach, can we cue you out of those positions effectively? If we can, perfect. But what else can we use to maintain that strategy, especially if we know you might have a history of injury there? Well, we have our front facing and our back facing neck isometric holds that can be great to not only give you awareness of, can my neck tolerate these positions? But then too, if you involve the upper trap aspect of it, you might feel like that quote unquote activates everything appropriately or just makes everything feel looser because now we put the neck in a position that everything around it can work appropriately and your head will feel like it's more on a swivel and you might feel even better range of motion and less tightness. So hopefully we can get you all the way from, man, I had a bad neck issue or reaction to that, all the way to, can I be proactive with this and what could I involve with it knowing that I might have those things developing. So all of that spectrum allows us to be the perfect physio coach to get you through having a previous history of injury or just trying to be proactive to avoid anything like that. And on the very far end, just having a better overall neck and cervical spine position should lead to better performance and range of motion with your pulling and pressing that will help your strength gains in the long run. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on all our social media uh, websites, Instagram, Facebook, The Works. If you wanna see more high quality content like this and to any other videos regarding coaching or physical therapy issues.